Welcome to the Merch Minds Podcast, episode 139. As you guys may have heard, Glenn is no longer part of the show. I kicked his ass off. I couldn't take his freaking uh, shenanigans anymore. No, on the serious note, he, um, you know, we mentioned on uh, last week's episode, he's no longer doing the podcast because he's not really doing print on demand anymore. So he can't really provide value. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be back. And um, in fact, I know that for a fact, and uh, we'll definitely catch up with him in the near future. But today, I have a very good friend on the show, my man, Yui. How are you? I'm good, y'all. How you doing? It's been a while, man. Um, so this is, you know, this is a milestone. And I'll tell you why, because I think this is the first time I had another Asian on the show. <laughs> really? so this show is like the asian persuasion show oh right so uh so this is a milestone so go ahead yui and uh, just introduce yourself um you know where you live you, you know just anything that you want to share about yourself and um your print on demand business yeah so uh i live in portland oregon um been here all my life so born and bred uh i have a graphic design background i went to school for uh, graphic design. I've always been interested in art. Um, lo- grew up loving uh, draw. Um, I got really into photography uh, maybe like 15 years ago and still do it here and there. And I found out about merch and print on demand uh, from Neil Lassen through Reddit. He had posted something about making like $30,000 in two or three mm-hmm. months or something on Reddit. And I was like, what the heck is this? So uh, that I saw that maybe in um, Q4 of 2016, I immediately signed up and um, applied. At that time, you had to wait and uh, before you got in, and it took about four months. So I got in in April of 2017. Um, took about a few weeks before I, uh, I I was able to actually start some designs and started selling to my friends. And then uh, eventually uh, started getting some organic sales and kind of took off from there. And it's kind of opened a lot of doors into going into other print on demand options. And then um, uh, a lot of other sites I'm on, Etsy, Redbubble, TeePublic. And uh, lately I've been kind of building up my own brand on Shopify. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we'll definitely get into. Uh, But it's... um... But it's good to uh, it's good to talk to you. We actually met in person. It's been a couple of years now, yeah. Yeah, it was it was uh, right before my wedding, like summer of two thousand seventeen. Okay, yeah. Portland. So yeah, so it's been a couple of years, um, and a lot has happened since then. Uh, first of all, congratulations on on the, um, the wedding. I was a little bitter. Uh, I never got the invitation in the mail, man. Um, but a lot has happened since then. Since the marriage, you now uh, um, you have a baby, a cute, cute, adorable baby. I forget, is it a boy or girl? It's a boy. It's a he's boy. A, yeah, he's he's my little man, uh, three months old now. His name's Sammy. He looks like a mini me, pretty much. Yeah, uh, no, I, he does. He really I, does. I posted a photo. It's like at five weeks, a photo of me and him, and everyone. A lot of people even think it's two photos of him. I'm like, no, that's me. That's him. <laughs> No, he really is, man. He definitely is a, a mini me. And, uh, oh, gosh, man, you know, uh, just babies in general. I mean, like, whenever you look at photos of babies, I mean, it, they make you smile because they're so cute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so congratulations on the baby, man. Um, Thank you. Uh, I, I know that. I know uh, that's what, number two for you? Yep. All right, man. Good stuff. Definitely spreading your seed. I see. Okay. Uh, but this is a family show, so we're not going to go there. Um, so let's talk a little merch, um, uh, merch a little bit. Well, first of all, um, I normally like to share my seven-day numbers on merch. You're more than welcome to share your numbers if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, but my last seven days right now is looking like it's 68 sold, uh, four, four returns, product purchases of $1,428.57 for an estimated royalty $330.72. Man, not looking good. Not looking good. Um, so 
did you want to share the numbers again yeah. don't 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 feel obligated to if you want to share them you're more than welcome to I, i'd love to share them uh, how are they looking I, last seven days i got a hundred sold 14 return which is kind of high i had a big order a few weeks ago and then all of them came back returned. Ah, don't you hate that yeah that pissed me off but it is what it is uh estimated royalties is 514 uh, and three cents okay so you're up there man good stuff good stuff so have you um so i you know i think this is like the official show since i came back from jury duty i mean i know last week glenn and i you know we had an episode but that was more of us just catching up yeah. So this is like the first official uh, merch show since since I've been on jury duty. Were you um were you affected by those crazy rejections at all? I had a few. Yeah. It it seems like they have uh, some sort of update where they're ch- maybe checking the USPTO and sometimes they may not be. L- I feel like they're not looking at if it's a standard word mark or if it's just a like a, a design mark. Mm-hmm. And they, they're. It seems like they're rejecting some things that shouldn't be. Uh, yeah. And I kind of just backed off updating. I, I haven't uploaded in a while. I was just trying to um, make some edits to some designs that I've had up for a while. And and my designs, I I feel they're pretty clean. Where I I check things and I don't. Um, the the type of designs I make are pretty safe for the most part. I don't sure. try to put my account at risk and try things that are you know, in the gray area or anything like that. So you're not like uh, me then. Yeah. I'm not wild like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I, I had, um, I had a bunch of rejections and it was, and I'm not going to lie, man. It was pissing me off. I was getting frustrated because a lot of them that were getting rejected. Number one, they were re uploads. So things that have felt fallen off. Yeah. I would re upload them. Um, number two, they will get approved in the UK and German market for, for whatever reason, they'll get rejected in the U S market and vice versa. Right. Yeah. Some will get approved in the U S market and then it'll get rejected in the UK or Germany. Um, so that was number two. And then number three, um, I lost my train of thought there for a second. You, uh, so, so yeah, so it was, it was, um, it was, I was getting rejections and then, you know, they were getting rejected in random marketplaces. Um, but then also, I, you know, I, I talked about the re-uploads, but also I feel like some of the swear or the curse words, because I have a few designs that have the curse words and it was doing the same thing where some would get approved and then some would get rejected. And then whenever you send like a, um, uh, an email to support you get like some random or like a generic response yeah and it's just so frustrating um and i wish and these and, and you know and i talk about how merch is kind of dying and you know a lot of it is also just me talking out of frustration but there's a lot of truth to it mm-hmm. and and things like that is really why i think a lot of people are kind of starting to get away from merch because like i said things like customer support, it shouldn't be that difficult, right? But, you know, obviously Amazon being Amazon, it's very difficult to get support. And um, uh, so it's very frustrating, man. So I don't know what it is, man. You know, uh, they say swear words are now allowed. I'm re-uploading the same damn designs and now they're getting rejected. I I don't know. Yeah, Um, it's it's frustrating. I get you. And, you know, what you're saying about merch being dead, it – I don't know if I would say it's dead. I, I know it's not what it used to be. Uh, it's dying. Um, a lot of people are getting frustrated. Yeah, and it used to be a lot easier. I used to see like new sellers come in in the communities and seem like they would blow up and you know if someone just joined and within a few months they're selling like several thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not seeing that anymore in the groups. I haven't noticed any of that. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I mean, I, I, was, I was one of those few um, that, that found early success, right? I mean, I pretty much documented my journey since episode one, right? Go back to episode one when, and you guys can hear, um, you guys can follow my journey. You know, I was making what 50, 60 bucks a week, whatever. And then I blew up to the point where I was consistently making $3,000 a month with only like three 
or 400 designs at most, right? And people were going nuts and I was going nuts. And, you know, those were, you know, those were the good old days. Um, obviously, that's not the case anymore. Um, I would say it's probably less than 1% that probably does significant, significantly well yeah. on merch by Amazon. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, I don't consider myself an expert. Um, just, just my, uh, just my theory, but let's, um, but I want, you know, um, and I want to also, uh, apologize to you. I know we were supposed to originally record this on Monday. Today's Wednesday. I was having some technical issues and I'm not going to lie. Just Monday in general was really bad. So thanks for your patience. And I, uh, um, want to apologize to the listeners as well, because I do want to, I do want to start putting out episodes on a regular basis. And, you know, we had that hiccup on Monday, so I apologize to the listeners. Um, so let's talk about, um, so, so you mentioned, you know, you're, 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 you're on Merch by Amazon and, and you have your designs on other marketplaces. Um, you mentioned Etsy. What's your favorite by far? As a secondary platform? Just in general. Is it Merch? Is that your number one favorite? It's my favorite because that's where I'm getting most of my money from right now. <laughs> well, that makes that, sense. Yeah, if I can get that same money from Shopify, my own brand, that would be better because at that point, I have my customer data and I can remarket to them and have an email list. And that's yeah, kind of my, yeah. my end goal. And, and we'll talk about that here in a sec because, um, because you do have your own brand now. Um, and I do want to talk about that. Um, How's Etsy working out for you? Uh, Etsy, I've neglected it and I've been wanting, it's been on like the back burner. I, I put a little bit of time into revamping some of it, but it's, it's mostly dead uh, mm. for me. It probably just trinkles in a handful of sales in a month. So okay. nothing too significant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I just want to let you know, man, you should definitely start working on it, man. There's a lot of potential in that marketplace. Um, so let's talk about what you're currently doing. You're now, um, as you mentioned, um, you do have your own brand. Is that something you want to share to the public? Because I know there's a lot of, a lot of uh, weirdos out there that like to copy brands and stuff. Is that something you want to share? Or you know, again, you don't have to. I'm fine with it. It's pretty, pretty uh, targeted. I feel like. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so 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 uh, what's your what's your brand? Uh, my brand is called Portland Squad. So. Uh, pretty much for the city I grew up in. And um, I see a lot of, uh, you know, there's been some other brands that have grown and I just don't feel like they represent the city well. And mm. I just thought I'd, I'd put my own spin on it and sure. kind of build up my audience and serve that. Uh-huh. And uh, so uh, Portland Squad, uh, that's, that's your brand, is um, your homage to Portland. Um, and um, I've seen your designs very simple, very clean. That's what I always ask for um, in designs. You know, when it, whenever it gets, and you know this obviously with your design background, when things get too complicated, it's just, it, it gets really chaotic, right? Mm -hmm. So you want your designs to be simple and clean and, and we'll share your story and everything here towards the end. But um, uh, so it's like you said, you know, it's, um, it's your, it's your store where, where, where you share your, your passion and love for Portland. Um, is it also maybe, um, do you have any designs for Oregon, the state as well? Or is it just uh, Portland? It's, it's uh, mostly Portland. Uh, I, I have thought if I want to branch it out to Oregon as well, but maybe I want to keep it kind of tight in terms of the market um, niche that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, so tell us about your venture into Shopify. So um, you launched your store when? It's, I would actually say it's in a soft launch right now. So it's technically live. And I've been trying to work some things out in the back end. I have some, um, some policies I need to figure out on the site uh, and finish some pages. Uh, I've had some sales going through just from, um, you know, my audience and, and uh, posting and things like that. But uh, I was hoping to push a uh, like a a big launch towards like a Black Friday season, so I'm just kind of preparing for that. Mm -hmm. But I officially like opened up the site maybe in July or so, and just kind of been okay. working on it. Right, right. So um, Portland Squad. Um, 
I find, so I actually went to your shop um, and I find that your prices are very reasonable. Who, who are you, who are you using to fulfill your orders? Because I mean, at the, cause I think most of us know that Printful, uh, as good as they are, they are very expensive. I'm actually using Printful and you and are. Okay. Yeah. And that's something I've been looking at and why I haven't really pushed the full live yet and really market it. Cause for short, early in September, there were some issues with Printful where there was, I'm not sure if you're in any of the Printful groups, but people were not happy as orders were like getting past the deadline. Uh -huh. And they kept saying, oh, it's still within the shipping time frame." But then uh, later on, like the CEO stepped in and said they had some issues at one of their fulfillment centers and they hired like 60 new people. And um, so, I don't know, it seems like things have been better lately. I had an order last week customer ordered on thursday it shipped on friday they had it on monday so for printful that's super fast that's like two two business days okay you know i personally never had any issues with printful when it comes to as far as fulfilling orders i've always had my my big thing was um i just like i said it, it's just they're in my opinion overpriced so, so i'm curious what what brand are you using because again i I've, I've seen your prices and they're really really affordable uh for my shirts i i use a simple glidden uh 6400 or 64,000. Wait, wait you said gildan yeah gildan oh okay well then that makes sense i thought you were using a super cheap shirt yeah okay i thought you were using maybe the bella canvas mm -mm. Okay. Uh, I do offer the Bella canvas. I, I call it premium on my site and I charge like five bucks more for that one. I got you. That makes, that makes total sense now. Okay. I wasn't sure, um, uh, uh who, uh, or what brand you were using. Okay. But that makes sense. So, um, so Printful has been working out for you. Okay. Yeah. And you know, I've, I've ordered a lot of the samples and the Gildan. Um, some people might think they're more boxy or whatnot, but I, I feel like for the price it's, it's, pretty decent yeah um remind me again how much they are on on, on printful is it like it it's was set, seven, seven something right yeah 7.95 now they lowered it it used to be 8.95 and then they dropped it down a dollar maybe a few months ago mm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah my like i said i, I never had an issue with printful my, my thing was they, they they were they're just too expensive um are you running ads at all or right now? I know, I know you said you haven't fully launched, but are you running ads or are you planning on running ads when you do the actual launch? Not, uh, I, so I'm currently not yet, but I do want to spend time with marketing, whether it's like Facebook, figure out Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, or even get into, um, using influencers or content creators, um, as I find appropriate. And something I want to do with the brand is, I know there's a lot of people that I know that are interested in supporting the brand and I would uh, start like a ambassador team kind of uh -huh. have people that represent the brand and go out and kind of be the kind of marketing for the brand too. And sure. Would you hire me as an influencer? Sure, man. You're, you're like Mr. Uh, hype man over here. I would love to have dude, you. I'll, I'll be your hype man. Dude. <laughs> I'll freaking wear your shirt up and down California, even though it says Portland. <laughs> That's cool. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so have you ever um, experienced with Facebook ads? I know you mentioned Facebook ads because I've, I've tried to learn Facebook ads and I swear it is – one of the most frustrating things ever, man. You seriously need like a PhD just alone on how to create and run Facebook ads. Have you, do you have any experience with that? Not yet. No. And that's something I want to learn. Dude, you're going to pull, I'm, I swear, man, <laughs> you're going to end up pulling your hair out because yeah. it is the most frustrating thing. I think Google ads might be better. Um, again, I'm no expert, but from what I understand, um, and from my own personal experience, Facebook ads is just so damn freaking frustrating. Yeah, I've, I've heard that from some people too, and it's it's not what it used to be, and a little harder to right. set up, and you can burn through your money quick if you're not on it. Right. Um, so you mentioned you are getting sales um, currently. Are they organic sales, or are they just family and friends, um, just kind of helping out, and uh, or is it both? Um, it's that's probably about 
seventy percent family friends right now, and then sure. about thirty percent organic because it's the brand's still pretty small and um, right. the audience is still small. It's just growing it, and think- and there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, and and this is uh, for any business, whether you're doing print on demand or or whatever your type of business is, it's always good to have family and friends kind of help support you in the beginning, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, so that reminds me, I have to buy a shirt and, and uh, to, to support you as well. Um, and um, just do me a favor. I, I tend to forget. Just remind me. <laughs> All right. Well, do I'm it. being serious. I'm, I'm a man of my word. Just tell me uh, I'll definitely order a shirt from you. Um, I do know that you are uh, leveraging social media a little bit. Um, you obviously have an Instagram page. Uh, profile that I follow are you do um, um I'm assuming you have a Facebook page yeah the Facebook page is I don't put as much time into it uh, I just pretty much once I put something to IG or Instagram I I'll kind of share it to Facebook too uh-huh but it's, so, it's set up okay so how's how's Instagram working for you because again I do follow you um, but obviously I don't see the analytics. I don't exactly see what you're doing mm-hmm. as far as, you know, behind the scenes. How's that working out for you? It's actually going a lot slower than I anticipated. Uh, I thought kind of just, um, just spending time interacting with people, the page would grow and just posting out good content. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, I've, I've never been a social media expert and sure. kind of figure that out. But I think I'll just kind of keep trying to learn and uh, go from there. Mm-hmm. Is uh, How many followers do you have so far? Oh, it's tiny. It's like one, 150. Okay. Well, you're going to have at least 200 by the time the show is <laughs> over. Um, yeah. In fact, in fact, why don't we just tell them now, uh, go ahead and follow this Portland squad, right? Just yeah. Portland squad on Instagram. Go ahead and follow Portland, like the city squad uh, on Instagram. Uh, tell tell UE I sent you. He'll give you a ninety five percent off on all apparels. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Um, but go ahead, go ahead and follow him there, um, and you guys can see his designs. And you'll you'll know what I mean by the the designs being very simple and clean. It's not anything complex. Um, and you mentioned influencers. Um, what kind of influencers are you looking for? Uh, people that are active in the community and kind of in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of people are drawn to doing outdoor stuff. So those are the kind of t- people I like to target as well as if they do those things as well as are into photography and can kind of capture their own photos. And um, it'd be great to have influencers that are having, they have user content that I can reshare or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like Instagram Again, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm like you in the sense that I'm not an expert when it comes to social media. Yeah, I have Facebook and, you know, I do have an Instagram account, obviously. Um, but I, as far as Instagram is concerned, I swear, I think the only way you can be really successful on Instagram is you got to be like some hot chick in a bikini model. <laughs> that helps. Right? So, yeah. so, 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 dude, I mean, you know, and I'm kind of being silly here, but at the same time, I'm, kind of being honest maybe that's the route you need to go right like like find some hot chick that lives and represents portland right and tell her you know i'll pay you a couple hundred bucks if you just wear this shirt and give me a shout out i don't know again i don't know if stuff like that will work Mm -hmm. um maybe that's something that you can consider yeah that's that's certainly an option and that i don't know if that um I know that could work. I, I just doesn't, I doesn't, it doesn't fit my brand. So I probably wouldn't go that route. Okay. Well then have a hot guy wear your shirt. Well, th- th- that's what you're there for, man. Exactly, man. Okay. I'll wear your shirt. I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll have my uh, uh, bikini bottoms on. Oh, oh. That's an ugly. That you was just went ugly. there. I know, huh? I just, <laughs> I just, I just painted the ugly picture. I can't unsee that y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so t- um so so tell us about the designs who's actually designing them is it just you it's all me it's all you your um my your wife she's not helping out no um i'm pretty much a one-man show kind of like you and i know you maybe started outsourcing a little bit for your designs but sure, I've, I did. I've been designing everything from the get-go my own postings or listings i post on myself and whatnot but i i do use tools to help with that um, 
And sometimes I, I do a lot of design sometimes that can help scale in the sense of I make a template for a design look and feel and I might use it for different niches and different change things up where it's not like I'm just changing out one or two words, but I'm just using the template and switching things out mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah. How's, um, um, how many designs do you have so far? uh designs or listings and then and, and i'm not talking merch i'm talking about um your shopify store your brand. oh my shopify i have only like five designs up mm -hmm. yeah. is it just t-shirts or do you have like sweatshirts do you have hats hoodies yeah i got uh i got more than t-shirts uh i do have long or i don't think i have added long sleeves maybe just one i put in mugs hats uh hoodies uh, started doing beanies, joggers, fanny pack. So kind of whatever print pool has that I feel would work for my store, what the, uh, I, I get them in. What the heck is joggers? What is that? Uh, sweatpants. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I didn't know what that was. I'm like, what are joggers? Yeah. Um, okay, so cool. So tell me, um, I know you mentioned – trying to run ads and, and put the possibility of influencers. Um, do you have any other strategies to try and scale your brand? Uh, I've thought about going to local shops. There's a, there, in the Portland scene, there's a lot of, um, it seems like resale, like vintage resale. Like if you have um, old classic, uh 90s or shirt or something like that people are kind of into buying that sort of retro stuff and they have like these little shops um that are kind of more towards the urban hipster type of crowd um i might eventually kind of go in there and see you know if if they want to partner and carry any of my product and then work out some sort of partnership like that as a mm -hmm. way to get into brick and mortars because i never want to open one myself in terms of having a man be there, you know, run a store and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't say never, but it's not my preference. Uh, but if for some reason the demand is there, I might do that. But yeah, that's something I, I've thought about uh, doing. No, dude, trust me. Um, and I'm speaking from experience, uh, brick and mortar store, um, while it might help your business. And I'm not saying don't do it, and, uh, but it's just, you know, I've seen, now, I, I talk about my parents a lot openly on this show. Um, my parents were small business owners, and it's just, you know, they had a physical location. They had a brick-and-mortar store, and it's just a pain in the ass. It's a lot of work, yeah. um, and it's just, um, I mean, if that's something that you want to get into, I'm not going to discourage you, but it's just, I think, you know, with, with technology these days, and, you know, it's, it's better to work smarter than harder, right? That's, that's always been, like, my, my motto, you know, I, I, as much as I love my parents, man, I don't ever, ever want to be like them. You know, they've worked long and hard hours, man, like 18 plus hours a day. And I don't ever, ever want to do that. Yeah. I have nothing against hard work, man. You know, again, I, this is stuff that I talked about, right? Um, I mean, the hard work is all I know, man. I mean, you know, they made me work since I was 12 years old, right? I had to work in the family business. Mm -hmm. and it's just, and I think... And I think that's one of the reasons why I just freaking hate it, man. It's because I was working since I was 12. And I'm just like, I don't want to ever freaking <laughs> do brick and mortar business again, man. Um, but, you know, I don't want to discourage you. If that's something you want to get into, um, by all means, do it. Uh, but you're right. Um, uh, you know, I've been to Portland a few times now. And, uh, you know, they do have, like you said, kind of like a little hipster market, right? <laughs> um, uh I don't, gr I don't know. Is grunge even still around? I want to, I almost said grunge, but um, is that even around anymore? I wouldn't say it's grunge. It's, I think hipster is kind of more the, the that's, that's, of that's, that's, that, Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, man, take advantage of whatever you can, especially um, as a, as a starting business. Um, um, so do you, let, let me get your opinion. Do you think, the pod market is saturated i think it has uh it's gotten saturated and doesn't mean that opportunity is still not there it's just 
it, it kind of weeds out people that don't have the uh, perseverance to kind of push through the tough times because it, it's not as easy. Uh, it's not as easy. No, it used to, really, to be. Yeah, you really had to grind it out sometimes and, you know, keep working on those days where it seems like merch shut, shut off or things aren't rolling in. But, you know, right now it's Q4. And if you work three months ago and put in the time, you're more likely going to, you know, see the benefits of that within the next few weeks once, you know, the holidays start picking up and sales explode up again. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you expecting a lot of sales? Uh, I'm hoping. Um, Again, this isn't merch. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about well, merch here a little bit. I'm more interested um, um, in, in your Shopify business, right? Are you expecting um, a decent amount of sales, you think? Honestly, right now with my Shopify, not yet. I haven't, I don't feel like I put in enough time in terms of the marketing to uh, get the brand exposure out enough to have anything significant in Q4. You never uh -huh. know if something goes viral and the right person shares it, it could explode. Uh -huh. uh, but based on just where things are progressing right now, um, I'm behind my schedule that I, where I originally thought I would be when I first opened up the shop. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember about two years ago now, I I opened up my, I had, I had a Shopify account, mm -hmm. and you know, as you mentioned earlier, I'm one of those guys, you know, that tries to do everything by myself, and and I know that's like the worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur, right? People always say you need you need to build a system and build a team. I know all that. Um, but one of the problems that I had was, um, while Shopify is easy, um, there's also, it, 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 I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the back end as well. I mean, yeah. it's, I'm, try, I'm trying to explain this in a way that people can understand. It's, so Shopify is like your um, all-in-one box package. Like everything's in there. But then there's some settings and stuff like that in the background. It just is very clunky, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be like a almost like a move-in ready house, like turnkey house almost per se. But then when right. you get in there, there's still things you have to set up. Like exactly. Move your furniture in and place place all of your belongings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you know, and that was something that I got really frustrated with. Um, you know, and I, I, I realized, you know what, man, I should have just hired like a VA, just had a VA, just build everything out for me, right? Mm -hmm. Just just tell him or her, this is something that I wanted, you know, um, and just just do it, right? Um, anyway, the point that I was trying to make was, uh, uh, yeah, so that was a couple of years ago. I shut down my shop since, and I've been wanting to revisit it at one point. At some, at some point, I probably will um, in 2020. I definitely will. Uh, but it's for me at that time, my particular niche, um, didn't take off the way I wanted it to. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, so I pretty much just let it die. Um, so I would have to do some research at some point next year, figure out what niche I want to get into and, um, and this time stick with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's the key. Even though you don't find immediate success, you just have to stick with it, right? Um, so, what made you? Again, obviously, you you live in Portland. Well, you didn't. You don't actually live in Portland, though, right? Do you? Uh, you I live, live on in the, the outskirts. Suburbs. Yeah, I work in Portland. Does that okay. count? <laughs> I went. Uh, my high school and college were in Portland. Okay. Okay. But but you don't you don't live there now. Not not exactly. Yeah. I'm okay. like the next city over. Mm -hmm. So um, did you want to get into that particular niche? Because again, it was just something in Portland. It's just a place that you love or, I mean, did you actually do like a, like a market study or just something like that? Like I said, you just, you're just very passionate about Portland. You love Portland. Yeah. I'm passionate about Portland. I love it. And I feel like I can bring some designs that uh, for my target customer that, would speak to them and they like it and, and for the most part a lot of people that have seen my designs around the city that I, or friends and family that i meet up that haven't seen it they all like it so yeah it, it's i like it of, too man i'm telling you seriously you. 
And, um, you know, when I was considering opening a Shopify, I did consider some of the other um, types, different brands I can build, you know, if I wanted to do and other things I'm interested in, photography or fitness or nature or hiking, whatever. Um, and I just felt this, this brand would be what I could speak through um, the best in terms mm -hmm. of not just, you know, having a bunch of designs where people would like, but um, I, I have a good feeling for what the city is and, and I can use the designs as you know, also a way to, and, and my social media presence as a way to kind of bring positivity into the city as well. And, you know, it, down the road, like big, picture plans for the brand is like for it to grow and we can give back with the brand and to the community whether it's um you know community um donations or just time we can donate um and help people that are in need and things like that good stuff man you know the only advice that i can give you right now and obviously i'm no freaking expert right especially when it comes to shopify you know i like i said i my last venture into Shopify, i just got done telling you it it, it, it bombed yeah um but i would say if there's any advice that i can give you is at least just just if you can stick with it right um and this is the thing and this is what i tell people when they when they want to get into podcasting right is um and again i don't consider myself a uh a rock star when it comes to a podcast, but at the same time, I do have the number one podcast when it comes to print on demand at this point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and you know, it's not bragging; it's just straight facts. Um, and um, and people ask me, you know, I have people approach me at times, you know, oh, how do you do it? I'm like, you just gotta stick with it, even if there's times you don't want to do it, you just gotta do it. You know how many times Glenn and I, you know, there were times we just wanted to take the week. Or even two weeks off, um, but we just, you know, for the last three years, we just kept putting out content, right? Yeah. Even Glenn, for the past uh, six months, uh, yeah. God bless his heart, man. You know, even though he wasn't doing much print on demand, you know, he, he, you know, he made a point of showing up every week and doing the show with me. Um, and the only reason that we didn't do the podcast the last two months was because, again, I was on jury duty. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, so the best advice that I can give you is, um, even if is even if business is bad for you, if you can continue doing it, man, just just keep, you know, just keep plugging away. Have you ever okay. thought about maybe doing like um, like like shows like like conventions or or fairs and stuff like that? You know how they set up booths. Yeah. Have you thought yeah. about doing stuff like that to maybe get the word out? That's really popular in Portland too, like uh, uh, night markets and stuff like that, and a lot of the some of the brands i know now that are doing well started that way they would start like at a saturday market or something like that to right. kind of get exposure and whatnot and um i love to do that it's just with uh, my work and the baby I, don't, I can't find time to barely even work on merch so things right. that take need my physical presence it's a little harder to do uh -huh. right now versus at least with um the print on demand, I can do it from home and be able to help right. out with the baby and things. Uh huh. Um, yeah, because that's, you know, I have a friend. She, um, I don't think she's making a lot of money. So she, she's been doing pretty much what we're doing, but she's been, she's been doing it for some time now. Um, and that's eventually how, how, how uh, she got her start was she would attend conventions and stuff like that like she goes to comic con every year mm -hmm. so like her particular niche is pandas right like she makes like these really cute panda shirt designs um and she's been like i said she's been doing this long before merch by amazon even existed she's like been doing this for like 10 plus years um and now she's gotten to the point where she's again she's not making like she's not getting rich off of it but she's definitely like she was she's she was able to quit a day job and she's doing this full time now yeah um, and, and she owes that all to, um, doing what I just said, right? Like, you know, like, like, like you said, like going to the night markets and stuff like that. And you guys have a cool little, um, night market thing. You took me to something there, um, when I was visiting, what was that? Like, that'd be the good, like, that'd be a good spot. Remember food, you, we, food carts? We, what, what was that? Did we go to food carts and then we went like, um, uh, there was like some kind like of a, a park where they had all kinds of food trucks and, and venues and booths. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, I mean, that could be a, a 
you know, that could be something you could look into, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're just, you know, here's the thing. There's so many ways you can approach print on demand, whether it's merch or, you know, what you're currently venturing into, such as Shopify. There's just so many things you can do. Um, it's just really just grabbing it, grabbing the bull by the horn and just, <laughs> and just, you know, just, just actually doing it. But um, that's super cool, man. Um, at any point, you think you'll get uh, your wife involved in the business? Is this something you know, that you think she, she wants to help out with? You know, from when I started, I've, I've talked to her to help and, as well as my, my daughter. And it's at this point, I'm just, it's, it's just not going to no, work not out. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, they don't have the passion for it. And sure. I have the passion for it. it. And, yeah. and also the, the other struggle is like, I've been doing it for three years and I know the ins and outs. There's so many different aspects of, you know, this pod, that pod, um, this tool and that thing. And to even get them on board, I would have to yeah. spend time training them, but that time spent training them, I could be working and it's just, it just hasn't worked out. Yeah. yeah. And even things like um, helping out with social media, I, you know, my wife says she can help out with that and mm -hmm. maybe we'll get that set up. Well, long as the support's there, I think that's the most important part, right? Because yeah. you could yeah. be doing something and if the support's not there, it makes it so much difficult, right? Yeah. Um, and, and uh, um, yeah, so that's awesome that um, the wife and, and the daughter is very supportive and, um, and I'm sure they'll probably get more excited as the business grows, right? You know, and they see the potential. Right now, obviously, like you said, it's just the beginning phase. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure as the business grows, man, they'll, they'll, once the dollars start coming in, they'll be <laughs> like, yo, man, how can we help out? Yeah, I know, right? That's cool, man. Um, but, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy. Uh, you have a, a, a three-month-old to look after. Um, I do owe you diapers and I, and I really mean it, man. I want to <laughs> send you some diapers. Um, it's going to happen. Um, but, uh, um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. This is true story guys. Like when I asked you to come on the show, he's like, dude, I need to plan ahead. I got to plan things out with my wife and the family because he is busy. Right. I mean, he has a day job, he's married obviously. And now he has a newborn to look after. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time out and coming on this show, especially after freaking uh, what happened on Monday, man. I really apologize for that. Oh, don't worry. I'm, I'm glad to be able to join you and finally yeah. be on your podcast. Yeah, man. Um, and like I said, you know, um, everyone has an open invitation to come on the show as long as they have something um, good to talk about, right? Um, and I know um, you have really good work ethics and I, and I really, really um, – um, enjoy seeing what you're doing so um yeah definitely um you know i saw i saw your uh i saw your uh your instagram so i was like man i need to get this guy on the show and have him <laughs> just talk about his whole journey even though it's just the beginning um appreciate you man and um uh, uh keep me posted uh you you'll have to come back on the show here maybe uh next sometime next year and uh, tell us how portland squad's doing yeah i'd love to do that man all right go warriors what no blazers bye <laughs>